first of all, thank you guys all for being here. I'm sorry that we're speaking English and not German or Austrian. I don't know what you call it. Um, but I wanted to ask if you guys had any questions. Um, is the most important way to start something. Do you guys have any questions? And any questions for us? Don't be shy. We have a wireless microphone, so we, you can speak into the mic. Into the crowd. Everyone is scared. Are you, you sir? You're not. <laughs> you just were touching your hair. Uh, <laughs> everyone is scared to ask questions. Fair enough. Um, it's it's great to embarrass yourself, right? You should embarrass yourself. Don't be scared to embarrass yourself. Um, so they asked us to do some. Oh, he has a question, this young man. Sir, what's your name? Uh, Florian. Florian, what's your question? Oh, what's your relationship? Like each other, like you and Matt, are you friends or? Yes, we're co in Europe we're called colleagues, but in America <laughs> actually we're called friends. So okay, so they don't say this word in America, colleague. If you ever <laughs> <laughs> they do not say your colleagues are very interesting. So uh, we're lovers. We're in love with each other. Um, we're brothers. Platonic, yeah. Platonic lovers. Um, we sleep in the same. What? <laughs> what? Botanical. Uh, botanical lovers. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we have a, we're a, a comedy. Like, a comedy duo. We do comedy together. We we have like a garden that we share. Um, we do so many things. So our relationship is is multifaceted. Is my answer, young man. Yeah. Any other questions about our relationship or? Or, you're, or do you have any questions about the relationship you're in at the moment? Do you, you want us to advice? answer any <laughs> advice? Okay, we're fucking around, or we're messing around. Um, so I wrote a, a poem a while ago, and I wanted to read it here because you don't often get to read poetry in public. Um, and there's a difference between, I think, lyrics and, and poems. And uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of times in the U.S. there's like a something they call the people's mic and then you can say whatever you want and then the next person has their opinion on it. Well, this is my mic and a lot of times, <laughs> so you don't get to like uh, weigh in on, on what I say about, about politics and this is gonna be a, a political um, poem which is kind of a poison word, right? Like when you talk about politics and you bring art or poems into it, it gets Yee. really like Bleh. Yikes. But I feel really strongly about some of the things that are happening in our world with uh, like, um, like industrialization of, of war and, and warmongering and politics and how a lot of people view um, people from the United States when we're outside of the United States. And first and foremost, I would say that I, I love and adore the United States as much as I love and adore Austria. I think there's beautiful parts of every part of the world. Um, so I wrote this piece that's more of like a, uh, well, let me just read it and then, um, then we can see what, what happens after that. But it goes like this, um, it goes, Iraq, Iran, get us out of Afghanistan, Russia, Japan, Germany, Thailand, Ramallah, Gaza, Belgrade, and Tripoli, Romania, Latvia, Bosnia, Yugoslavia, Rwanda, Sudan, Iroquois, and North Ireland, Korea, Kosovo, Cambodia, Laos, and Italy, in Bogota, Riyadh, Aden, and Saigon, Somalia, Syria, Nigeria, and India, Iraq, Iran, why was us in Pakistan? Mexican cartels, Chilean bombs fell, Austria and England are far more boring. Warsaw, Paris, Havana to Detroit, Chechnya, Slovakia, Croatia, Liberia, Kashmir, Burma, Tunisia, Tahrir, Tiananmen, Serbia, Panama, Timor, Hezbollah, Johannesburg, San Salvador, Algiers. Uh, that's the poem. Um, and <laughs> there's no, uh, you don't have to applause, but um, it's to me, it's like uh, the idea that there's uh, beauty in every country in the United States as well as like uh, a conflict going on. And you can be someone that focuses on conflict and watches war on television and gets really excited about it. Or you can be someone that watches pornography and gets excited about sex and creation. Or you can be someone that y you like pornos. Uh, we have our first audience reaction. Do you have any questions <laughs> about, <laughs> about how the body works or how you were born? Um, so that's like a piece that I wrote. I, I really feel strongly about some of the things that happen in the Middle East and how the U.S. are, are uh, how they're viewed. Um, and, and to be sure that I'm, I'm anti-Obama, I'm, I'm um, anti-presidents and I'm anti-government. Um, to me, it's a really scary idea to have no control over uh, this type of beauty. So that's why I wanted to write this poem is just to say that I know the names of these places. I know that there's beauty in them and I know um, and recognize your conflict, but without having to focus on the negativity to just put the names next to each other. And, and it's like most of the art or, or creativity that I make, it's something that happens that has to come out of you. 
um, rather than like sitting down to consciously write a poem. And that's why I'm like a, maybe a little bit nervous to read poetry in front of people. So that's, uh, I guess that's my poem. I don't know. There's not, I'm not good at spoken word. I wish that you guys had questions about where you came from or where you were born. You know, your parents love each other very much, right? Um, in one thing, <laughs> one political act that we believe in is the act of dancing. Thank and you. This is my friend, Matt. He's really now going to you. So part of the act of dancing is music. And we're lucky enough to be involved in making people dance and bringing people together as well with TBA at events like this. And when you bring people together, it's possible to have more of an impact, even beyond words and beyond language and politics. I think he has a really good point is that, um, and we know some of these people from a music world and we know some of these people from an art world, but the way that music speaks to the brainstem, it goes past um, a lot of bullshit it, and gets it gets right into the idea of you either lose yourself in this or you are opposed to it. And oftentimes uh, visual art has a much harder time or spoken word for God's sake has a much harder time breaking through a barrier. You guys are all looking at me like I'm fucking crazy, but music right away you can hear a cymbal or a drum beat and say oh i can get to that james brown like a little bit of something like that but if you look at a sculpture you don't necessarily just snap and dance to it you have to like hmm what is happening with this sculpture okay um so i, I do agree with matt when he's saying like a political action is like uh, dancing or movement and uh when you get involved in the creativity of like uh something like dancing you're it's it's creativity it's not destruction you know it's it's creative uh creative beauty and and to be focused in on that politically i think that we could really do a lot of good in this world through dancing that that hasn't yet uh happened and that's why we want to do projects with tba and why we're excited to try and push our the word performance is really ugly but like uh performances and and ideas past a point and past a human experience um yeah well i was watching on the airplane last evening uh the new Dolly Parton, Queen Latifah movie. It's amazing. And uh, they're performing Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. <laughs> and uh, I think people are, for some reason, be it the noise, but you're more inclined to cry on a plane and watching Queen Latifah sing this Michael Jackson song about uh, starting the you were, change. <laughs> you were crying? Yeah, it was so... It was just a really beautiful moment, and uh, to look in the mirror and, and start a world change by looking at changing yourself, I think, is really important, and I thank Queen Latifah and Dolly Parton for reminding me, and Michael Jackson, who died almost a year ago, I think, maybe two days ago, so... Rest in peace, Michael. Michael Jackson, and, uh, <laughs> you know, part of what we did, we're showing the videos of the gelatin performance, and... It was the same idea of bringing people into an environment like this and giving them food and giving them music and giving them water or wine or something that just can let you relax enough to open up your energy and to just provide that good vibes. And I totally agree. Uh, Daniela used the word uh, hippies before, and that's like, a, again, like kind of a bad word. Um, and our friend Dan uses the term fellow travelers. So like uh, hippies, they're OK. Um, but they're kind of like an ugly, uh, weird. It was, yeah, it was a different idea. But, you know, fellow travelers, you know, we can be friends with hippies. Uh, we have a term that's like from, we borrowed from CCR. You guys, have you heard of CCR before? It's uh, Credence. Just one person is, well, they're a band um, from. Uh, San Francisco. From yeah, the Bay Area, Oakland. I, I think uh, Sacramento area. Anyways. San Francisco? People know oh, them. They know them? Okay. Okay. Uh, they uh they had a term called chuglin. It's like keep on chuglin. Do you know the term? So it means to just kind of keep on like traveling and flowing with life. Um, and that really to us really interests us. Like hippies are exciting, but uh, they wouldn't necessarily maybe be able to chugle in some situations. Yeah. So um, we just want to let you guys know to keep on chuglin. <laughs> <laughs> All of you here today. Yeah, and that's I don't know. That's kind of what we're we're excited about in life. Um, is is to just like uh be a traveler to you know find out what comes next you know we didn't know that we would be standing on a stage until maybe less than three weeks ago when did you call us maybe three weeks ago a couple of weeks ago maybe <laughs> two weeks ago um but that's the way the best things happen very very last minute um and we're excited to be here you know they say get on an airplane and come 
five thousand miles and tell people what you think. I don't really know what I think, um, <laughs> but I'll get on the airplane, and that's kind of the exciting part. Um, you know, I got a book with a bunch of words in yeah. it, but it's not it's not necessarily for you. <laughs> um, but you know, like a, a lot of times, like poetry is like a very private, like a a thing that you write and and then you don't show to anyone. That's why this is like kind of a scary topic, and that's why it's kind of the only poem I could really talk about and read is because. Um, to maybe just like represent the U.S. outside of the U.S. and talk about um, talk about the beauty that, that some some of the beauty of the creative expression that goes on in in the U.S. right now um, as a reaction to a lot of the the political things that happened with our former president, um, Mr. Bush, and our current president, Mr. Obama. Um, you know, they're really fucking up. They're dropping the ball politically, and it's like watching Rome crumble from within. It's like watching the walls fall around you. Mm. Um, but some really exciting, beautiful things come out of that. If you've ever been to New Orleans, Louisiana, it's a, it's a musical city, you know? And the, the United States forgot about New Orleans, the way that the United States forgot about Miami, forgot about Detroit, you yeah, know? Yeah, there's um, lost, in America, there's lost cities, Mobile, Alabama. You know, a storm hits it, and they decide not to fix it. So to us, that's where a lot of the beauty is, and we want to bring that up in, in situations like this and say, hey, if you're from Austria, why don't you come? Come to New York, and we'll show you around, you know, but also... Go to Detroit. Go to Detroit and, like, make, uh, you know, make some inroads there, make some friends there, and, yeah. and, and discover what maybe some of the the parts of the U.S. that... Uh, that there is, like, a, a real sense of freedom there where there's no police, and there's... There's no, they say, don't, the police will say, don't call us. No, it's real. They, they have, uh, yeah. Oh, he's working in Detroit on the biennial. There's a lot of great art going on there. And really the police do say publicly, like, do not call us if your house is getting broken into deal with it yourself. They say, yeah. Don't, don't call us if you know, you have a problem in the street. A a noise complaint. Don't call us. Please don't call us. We want to say as loudly as possible that, you know, police are rapists. In the United States, a lot of times police are murderers. Um, there's really nice, really good police, but for the most part, power corrupts, and that's why we try and remain as humble and powerless as possible as artists, you know, and continue to like fall on our face constantly, so that so that you remember kind of what it is to be uh, to be a child and to be falling down as much as possible. Um, come on, someone has to have a question. Bring it, bring it. <laughs> What's your question, sir? You just took a drink. You have to ask a question. Does anyone have a question about Green Day's new album? <laughs> it's going to be a three-part <laughs> album. Does anyone have a question about what? Did you think of I'm something? I'm going to make up a question. <laughs> you had a look on your face. <laughs> hmm. I'll just think of questions and ask us. <laughs> Detroit? Um, have you ever been to Chechnya? Very destroyed. I haven't. <laughs> No. No. It looks like a brick city that is... Or, or Latvia. You know when the Russians left and they would destroy everything, but they would destroy it very quickly? Do you know this? Like they would pull down the barracks and stuff, but they would destroy it in one day? It looks like that. It lo- There's so many mansions. There are these huge houses made of brick with beautiful stained glass windows and columns and like no roofs, you know, like just abandoned and decrepit and completely dilapidated but you could just feel that at one time this this rich power that lived there that just left so it just feels like nothing i've ever nothing i've ever experienced before i don't know what else to to say to these people yeah there must be something interesting i don't know (laughs) Should we play some music? Yeah, I, I think we're going to play some. Oh, we got one question. Oh, th- please. <laughs> oh, that's his mother has beautiful. Yeah, hair. it's just she, luck. She passed it down. <laughs> he has really nice hair, right? Thank you. <laughs> I washed it, which is not. That's super rare. Yeah, it's rare. <laughs> We both got our mother's hair. That's something we both love our mom. If you, if I could say anything to you guys, I would say respect and love your mother, you know? It's difficult yeah. sometimes, but you got to... It's not easy. We both yeah. butt heads because we have really pissed off strong mothers. Yeah, you, they're so smart. <laughs> but that's where he got his hair. That's the answer to your question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the beats. Oh the yeah. Beat? I just saw David Amran perform. Do you know David Amran? He's a jazz drummer. He's from a the fifties, pian sixties up until today. He worked with uh Kerouac and I actually saw a lot of um it was in the village and some beats actually read. He played with Kerouac and he was at their bars. Ginsburg. Um, you know what's like in nineteen fifty six, me and Ginsburg. I think it's really interesting. It's really beautiful movement of people. But at the same time, it's not my generation. So all I can do is admire it and, and say that there was beauty that came out of it. It's not true. Oh. <laughs> Maybe, but... You, you pick up uh, the beat generation's uh, methods and issues actually against uh, Americans' pol political ways nowadays. So you would, it's like a relaunch of beat. Would you agree in a way? Like <laughs> I think there's many philosophies that have come through since the beat philosophy that along the same line and maybe where an extension of that line of thought where, you know, you get what you ask for. So if you see the ugliness in America, you're going to see ugly. But if you strive to see the beauty in something, you're going to, even if it's just a little glimpse, you're going to see it. So I think it's an issue of focus as well. And not to just turn a blind eye to all of these things that might be displeasurable, but... Um, I think you get what you ask for a lot of the time. I think also the 1950s were a very different time in the U.S. as well as Austria. I mean, of course, that's very easy to say, but um, that they were a reaction to uh, an, a, a war that had just happened and to them, like, traveling and seeing this beauty of America was something that they hadn't accessed before. They hadn't seen these highways before, so they were really, really gorgeous. Um, and we've certainly done the same type of traveling where when we started our group, we just got yeah, in a car and, and moved as quickly away from where we were from as possible in order to see new things. Um, to go swimming, you know, to do small things to find the beauty where we swam in the Detroit River and you would think that it would be a polluted mess. But actually, because the industry has left, it's crystal clear. So just and I was scared. I was like. That's disgusting. I'm not, you know, I'm from New York. You don't swim in the river, but, you know, there are cities in America where in the middle of the city, San Marcos, Texas, and Austin, Texas, where in the very center of the city, you can swim in crystal waters. So it's just little, little things like that that keep my faith in the country, you know, that I travel around a lot in, which happens to be America. But I, I think you have a really good question. I mean, I, I definitely respect what you're saying, um, but I also think that... Um, because I thought a little bit about this. People try and put us like, oh, we define you as this. You are a, an artist working in this way. And um, that's what we kind of strive to, to, to get away from. So if someone compares us to the beat generation, I say, yeah, except for I'm going to stand over here now and let it slip past. You yeah, know? Um, it's like, oh, you're a punk rock? No, we're video artists. <laughs> or you're a video artist? No, no, no. You know, so to remain fluid, you know, Bruce Lee... No way as way. No as way as way, you that's know. That's Bruce Lee's motto. But certainly my dad was someone that showed us the beats when we were really young. And that's that's my dad's generation. You know, he was someone that was around that type of stuff in California and uh, saw some strange, strange things in the in the 50s and early 60s. Um, it seems to me you're fighting for the same things. The same issues come up again. Even in political way, like war, it was the Second World War, but now there are other wars. Sure. And freedom is not. Uh, I I don't think people live freedom in U.S. now, as so. It's just some <laughs> some people do and some people don't. You know, I don't. You know, I'm. But maybe some people are. F you know, there are people who are freer than me. But I think it's. Uh, 
it's more of a state of mind. So if you can get past a lot of the mind control that, that happens, that's a, another aspect of freedom. So it's difficult. There's a lot of media and there's a lot of... You have something to say about the beach, no? Yeah, but... Okay. You can say. No, I wanted to ask, Japanther, is that like um, Japanese panther, or was it like metal, or... like? Yeah, it was more like heavy metal. <laughs> 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 yes. It's pretty cool. I like the name. Yes, we are very influenced by, uh, you know, listening to Slayer and... Uh, listening to Bad Brains and, um, you know. Is there <laughs> is there a cool music scene in Detroit now, like what used to be there? Like the well, that's just like where disco music and techno is happening. Yeah, not to mention Motown and Stax. There there's place. always going to be a one, like a, there's just a soul in Detroit that breeds musicians, you know, from gospel to punk. Yeah, we just happen to be there. I was going to ask if you're from Detroit. No, we're from New York, from New York, from Long Island. Uh, it gets a little too cold. <laughs> Blah. Um, Barf. Please. She her question was who is influencing us and what kind of artists? Um, our friends influence us. That's why I was going to respond to you a lot. And I think that's why the beat generation was so beautiful is that their friends directly influenced them. So when you look here, you see the, the Viennese collective gelatin, you know, and that's, um, they, we saw them in New York before we ever met them. And it's a really amazing group of people. If you've ever seen their shows, they're really whimsical and funny. Um, but at the same time, like, uh, my favorite music right now is, uh, Flatbush Zombies. And that's like, very hip hop, you know, like Brooklyn hip hop. And when you're in Brooklyn, that just sounds perfect. And the things that they're saying sound perfect. But then you go outside of Brooklyn and Flatbush zombies sound very weird because <laughs> Flatbush is so far away and the words they're saying make no sense. And it's the visual environment that it was created. in. so when I'm in Austria, maybe we put on like a piano concerto <laughs> or something. But um, God, visual artists, uh, I love a lot of stuff right now. The Those Russian people that are performing called Voina, have you seen them before? And they come into a McDonald's with these cats, like stray cats, and just throw cats at the people behind the counter. Or they did like uh, a day where they just went and smashed cop cars. Um, and they'd get away with it as performance, you know? And that's like in a place like Russia, which is, f whoa. Um, but again, like a lot of our friends influence us, you know, like um, the people directly around us. And they maybe aren't the most famous people, or maybe they are famous, and, and we don't know. Um, I love, uh, my friend is a video artist. Her name is Aida Rulova, and I love her work. But it's, you know, I don't watch any video artist except for her. Um, maybe not any, but um, we love the Ramones, who are from New York City. That's, like, one of my favorite bands of all time. Um, who influences you? The Beach Boys? The Beach Boys. I've been listening to a lot of Beach Boys instrumentals. We so listen to the Beach Boys over and yeah, over. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I know uh, I've been listening to the Donna's first album, and I know that's like a dirty word for people, but if you listen to their first record, it's really amazing. It's Super actually written by uh, their friend. Um, yeah, they didn't write it, but it's yeah, still But amazing. it's good. I mean, it has that, it kind of harkens back to that idea of like, soul or Motown or, or having something written for you and then performing it, which I think is really a gorgeous idea. The Rolling Stones. I know. Michael Jack. Yeah, Dolly Parton, Queen Latifah. <laughs> I listen to a lot of hip-hop. That's, like, mainly what I listen to at my house. Um, and a lot of punk bands that are just, like, contemporaries of ours. This band, Pangea, who's amazing. Yeah. Um, God. There's, it's hard to get put on the spot with that idea of like who, who influences you. But um, our friend Dan Graham, who's an amazing artist and like a thinker, influences us a lot. You know, you go over to his house and talk with him for like a few hours and then you leave there and your brain is completely scrambled and you have a notebook full of books you have to read. <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, but you know, like uh, 
anything, anything can influence me. You know, like I really like markings on buildings or like when you see a building that's completely fucked up looking, I love the decay and that really influences me to maybe write something or like there's never a direct correlation of like I want to be a painter so I look at this painting all the time. Man. Yeah, the feeling we just uh, jumped off a bunch of cliffs into water and that's really been <laughs> consuming my thoughts. Like this summer I really want to dive and my goal is really to just dive off of it's the highest so, it's not easy to you can jump off and that's scary but to like jump head first so scary. and uh so jumping off of things has really been influencing me <laughs> and especially into water and just trying to keep a positive attitude and say yes the movie yes man with jim carrey jim influences Carrey's me a yes lot man. that's an influential you know, it's silly but it's difficult to say yes. And uh, just punk rock and dancing, just seeing and making people dance. like That influences you? Yeah, like if I can... Inf- <laughs> say again? Yeah. I, I think, know, right? I think I we have to go play music. Just this is not talking about me? Really All right. boring. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> what? Don't apologize. Oh, yeah. Never apologize. Never, not apologizing. <laughs> that influences you? You never do say sorry because it's bullshit. Even if you fuck up really, I mean, if you fuck up really bad, you could say like, listen, sincerely, I apologize. Maybe use that word. But if you always say like, oh, I hit you. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I bumped into you. Excuse me. I'm sorry. The word loses all power and it gets really to be like a crutch that the whole human race, like we're fucking each other over with the word. I'm sorry. So I'm not sorry. It just he, I don't know. He maybe is. It was a slip. It's very. It's easy, right? It's, it's easy to slip. It's really easy. Come on, any other question? Ooh, this is maybe a sore spot. Um, I personally, I don't like Sonic Youth. I don't like what they're doing, and I don't like them as people. Uh huh. Um, is there an applause for that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Um, I think what they're doing is very boring. Um. But, but it's the same question, like the beat generation there, you know, a generation before us. So uh, we didn't re- really look. There may be three generations before. <laughs> okay. I actually listened to their tape. Um, I like one side of their tape sister. So I do have something positive to say about Sonic Youth. One side of tape sister. Yeah. one si- The side A of tape sister, <laughs> I can recommend. But other than that, I'm not familiar. Mm. They are friends with Dan. They didn't influence me. No. I, I, we never really listened to them that much. But it's interesting. They're definitely involved in the art world, you know, yeah. and they're making it's art cool. and doing interesting. Yeah. Um, well, actually, both their, Kim and Thurston's parents are professors, like, yeah. at huge liberal arts colleges. So they, they grew up in academia. Um, neither of us grew up in academia. His parents teach at an at you know Ele- I drew, grew up in elementary school academia <laughs> um so but also the northwest had a big influence on Ian because I'm from the Pacific Northwest I say that proudly it's in the the um upper left hand corner of the United States and it's the most beautiful part of the entire world uh, I grew up seeing like Nirvana and Soundgarden and uh, those bands liked Sonic Youth so we looked into them and heard them and we Sonic Youth actually got Nirvana onto uh, to Geffen Records, yeah, they're they've taken a lot of bands and championed them that even go past Sonic Youth, which is interesting. So yeah, and I think that's the one thing I can point to that's really positive about them. And and Dan Graham, it says it's uh, the artist's responsibility to champion younger artists, you know, because you learn. It's like a reverse mentor when you're you're taking in a kid who's 22 years old and he's telling you, oh, you got to look at this website or you got to listen to this song. It might make no sense to you and you don't like it, or it might just speak right to your brain, you know, and. Um, that to me is like a really great thing that Sonic Youth has done. They championed a lot of interesting bands. So, I don't know. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about cigarettes? <laughs> no, no, uh, no. They're good for you. Does anyone need it one? just came out. They, they're good for you. Okay. Think we're going to play some music because this back. is so boring. Okay. But, um, Thanks, gonna, everybody, for listening. We're going to play with Philip Kuhnberger and our friend George and our friend Florian, and we're going to do some songs around the corner here. So, you know, if you guys want to have a beer or you want to have a cigarette or a beer and a cigarette or... Um, or a juice and a salad. 
or a juice and a salad or like you know some clams and uh a blunt um the, any of these things are possible you can have anything you want that's another if i was going to say something to a crowd i would say that everything in the world is entirely possible and that you should really just like go past your potential you know like human beings are so fucking lazy i read this quote the other day that it's like uh if you get to know pain then you'll never be um you'll never be lonely <laughs> And I was thinking of it last night. My leg was really, really hurting me, and I'm I'm not supposed to be running, but I'm running anyways. And uh, if you know pain, you'll never be lonely. And there's pain hanging out with me. And I was like, Oh, how you doing, man? So um, <laughs> if you really get to know pain, you'll never be lonely. And I think that's an important part of the human existence is to push yourself further in order to better the entire um, species, you know. And it's it's not about being an Austrian or being an Australian. Uh, it's about being a, a member of a species that's in in grave danger at this point in time, you know. And uh, the survival and bettering of that species is important to us. So to know a little bit of pain is important for um, the generation seven generations down the line, you know, like picture your granddaughter's 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 granddaughter um, and what we can do for her. So that's where I'll leave it. Thank you guys. And thank you. Thanks to TBA.